Peter to the Jewish strangers. Chapter 1. The strangers scattered. 1 Peter 1 verse 1 Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. In Acts 2 verses 9 to 11, we read about Jews from Pontus, Cappadocia, and Asia present on the day of Pentecost. An apostle of Jesus Christ, a sent one. He was chosen in Matthew 10 verses 1 to 7. To the strangers scattered throughout, Peter wrote this epistle to his Jewish brethren that were strangers to the Gentiles they were living among. Acts 2 verse 9 Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia, Acts 8 verse 1, and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Acts 11 verse 19, now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenis, and Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Saul did not stop his persecution at the death of Stephen, he went after the Messianic church with great hatred. This helps us to determine when the epistle was written because if the saints in Jerusalem scattered into these regions, then the apostles had the responsibility to relay God's word to them to aid them in their walk. How could Israel be scattered into the nations if God promised to establish his kingdom with them in the land? Because they disobeyed God's covenant and crucified their king, so God did what he said he would do if the nation got to that point. He scattered them. Leviticus 26 verses 31 to 33, And I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, and I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. The doctrines found in the Hebrew epistles, Hebrews through Revelation, also prove an early dating as they differed greatly from Paul's epistles written later, but were in perfect harmony with the four Gospels and Acts 18. Paul wanted to go into Asia and into Bithynia in Acts 16 verses 6 to 7, after passing through the region of Galatia, but he was forbidden to go there. That is where Peter and the circumcision believers were working with some of the little flock, Luke 12 verse 32, that had scattered two, who had gone to Jerusalem in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost and were saved. Paul said that he would not build on another man's foundation. Romans 15 verse 20 Yeah, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. 1 Peter 1 verse 2 Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace, be multiplied. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, all of the strangers, believing Israel, that were scattered, that believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, were elected to be sanctified through the Spirit, not to be saved. Peter later tells his same audience, believing Israel, at the beginning of his second epistle, to make their calling and election sure. 2 Peter 1 verse 10 Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Unto obedience, this is Christ's obedience on the cross. The sprinkling of blood is Christ offering his blood in the holy place in heaven. Hebrews 9 verses 11 to 16, But Christ being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats, and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Hebrews 12 verses 18 to 29, For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that. The word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned, or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight, that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Shaun, 
and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape, if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire, and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 11 verse 28, Through faith he kept the Passover, and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Hebrews 12 verse 24, And to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Grace be unto you, and peace be multiplied. This is similar, yet different from Paul's opening statement in all thirteen of his epistles written to the body of Christ. Paul never uses the word multiplied, and Peter does in the opening of both of his epistles. 2 Peter 1 verse 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, and of Jesus our Lord. 1 Peter 1 verse 3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Begotten us again, to be begotten again, born again, means that these Jews collectively must have been begotten sometime in the past first. This is a reference to their being born as a nation when they came out of Egypt, when they received the law at Mount Sinai. They were begotten again by believing that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. John 3 verses 3 to 8. Unto a lively hope, this is their resurrection, to live forever in their kingdom. The hope of Israel is that even though they may die before the Lord returns to set up his kingdom, they will be resurrected because Jesus Christ was. Acts 28 verse 20, For this cause therefore have I called for you, to see you, and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. 1 Peter 2 verses 4 to 5 To whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Christ is called a living stone rejected of men and Peter's audience, the little flock of Israel scattered among the Gentiles, are called lively stones. 1 Peter 1 verses 4 to 5 to an inheritance incorruptible, and undefiled, and that the death not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time, to an inheritance incorruptible, and undefiled, and that for death not away, reserved in heaven for you, Israel will get their national salvation when they go into their kingdom in the last time. Kept by the power of God through faith, these kingdom believers are kept through faith by the power of God. John 10 verses 27 to 30, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time, is a national salvation on the day of atonement as Israel's kingdom begins. Acts 3 verses 19 to 21, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. 1 Peter 1 verses 6-7 Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. These are the temptations that will befall people in the tribulation period to take the mark of the beast. The trial of your faith, this is the ultimate trial Israel will face, and to fail it means to spend an eternity separated from God, while the opposite is true for those who pass this trial. God has warned them before it comes upon them. They will have to heed his warning. Revelation 2 verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, 
that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, though it be tried with fire. This is speaking about the tribulation period where Israel is purified through the fire. Job is a picture of the believing remnant coming through the tribulation period and receiving their reward double in the kingdom. 1 Peter 4 verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Malachi 3 verses 1 to 6, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow, and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. At the appearing of Jesus Christ, this is the appearing of Jesus on the earth, when every eye shall see him at the onset of the kingdom. 1 Peter 1 verses 8-9 Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, this is the salvation of believing Israel's souls that endure through the tribulation period. Our salvation in the dispensation of grace is a present possession. 1 Peter 1 verse 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, salvation for Israel at the beginning of the kingdom, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. The grace that Peter was writing about was prophesied in the prophets. This was not the dispensation of grace that Paul preached about. Our grace today was hidden in God from the beginning of the world, not mentioned in the prophets as part of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Ephesians 3 verses 8 to 9 Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 34, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The New Testament, which is not the books of Matthew through Revelation, is the prophesied grace that will come to Israel in her kingdom, and it is all about God doing a work in them, causing them to live for God, whereas the law was weak and could never do this. 1 Peter 1 verse 11, Searching what, or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, and the glory that should follow. The sufferings of Christ, Israel's prophets didn't understand everything they prophesied about, and they would search the scriptures to try to determine what manner of time, when, it would be that Christ would suffer. Isaiah 53 verses 1 to 12 KJV, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely, he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, 
we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. 1 Peter 4 verses 12 to 13 KJV Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that, when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. The glory that should follow, his reigning in the earthly kingdom as King of kings and Lord of lords. They didn't see the dispensation of grace being ushered in interrupting Israel's program, so it clouded their understanding regarding the timing. 1 Peter 1 verse 12 Unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things, which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. The angels didn't understand the gospel of the kingdom when it was preached in the gospels and early acts period, because God was offering the kingdom if Israel would repent. They don't understand the gospel of grace today either, because they were not saved as we are. They desire to look into those things they do not understand, just like we would like to look into what went on with them when a third of them chose to follow Satan's path, and two-thirds chose to follow God's way. 1 Peter 1 verse 13 Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The grace that is to be brought unto you, the tribulation saints hope to the end of the tribulation period for their grace that doesn't come until Jesus Christ reveals himself to Israel just prior to setting up his kingdom on this earth. At the revelation of Jesus Christ, see the book of the Revelation, which reveals events leading up to his revelation to the world and his kingdom that is to follow when he brings the prophesied grace to Israel in the kingdom. 1 Peter 1 verses 14 to 16 As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 11 verses 44 to 45 For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy, neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt, to be your God, ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. They will need to be holy, because as first John tells these tribulation saints that he which is born of God does not commit sin. Someone who does not commit sin obviously lives a holy lifestyle. It is required of them, and they are given extra help in that short and terrible time to do just that. This does not mean that they cannot sin, because there are all kinds of warnings to the believer in those days not to lose their faith, coupled with warnings that they are to endure unto the end etc. 1 Peter 1 verses 17-19 And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, forasmuch as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Judgeth according to every man's work. Matthew 5 verse 16 Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Israel's leaders were, and will be again teaching, the vain conversation, the commandments of men for their doctrine. Matthew 15 verses 8 to 9 This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoureth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. With the precious blood of Christ, this was the fulfillment of the type that the Lamb represented. No Lamb could ever redeem someone, 
but Christ who shed his spotless blood could. 1 Peter 1 verse 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Revelation 13 verse 8 in the book of the life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, who was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Christ was foreordained to offer his sinless blood for sinful mankind before the foundation of the world, but he appeared to Israel in the beginning of their last days for them. 1 Peter 1 verse 20 In these last times, Peter tells us that Christ came and manifest himself to Israel in these last times as the kingdom would have come soon if Israel would have accepted Jesus when he came the first time. Acts 2 verse 17 and Hebrews 1 verse 2 tell of the last days and times that will come to Israel after the rapture happens. Hebrews through Revelation are all written for Jews suffering in the tribulation period, which are also called the last days. 1 Peter 1 verses 21 to 23, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Being born again, it is Israel that is born again, by the word of God, not us. Israel was born the first time as a nation when they came out of Egypt, and they must be born again, to enter into the kingdom prepared for them. We in the dispensation of grace, are born of God as well, but we are not born twice spiritually speaking as Israel is. 1 Peter 1 verses 24 to 25, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The gospel is the good news of the soon coming kingdom. They are not preaching to the Jews scattered abroad the same thing that Paul preached, which was the gospel of the grace of God. Chapter 2 A Spiritual House and Holy Priesthood 1 Peter 2 verses 1 to 3 Wherefore laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. The sincere milk of the word, Hebrews 5 verses 12 to 13. Just as babies desire their mother's milk, so ought new believers to desire the word of God. 1 Peter 2 verse 4, To whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. 1 Peter 2 verse 5. A living stone, Jesus was not a dead lifeless stone, but a living stone that was rejected by Israel's leaders. He will have his day in the kingdom when all will worship him for who he is, and for what he has done for them, because he is chosen of God, and precious. Matthew 21 verse 42 Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes? Chosen of God, chosen to be the chief cornerstone. 1 Peter 2 verse 6. 1 Peter 2 verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Israel was the nation that was to offer up literal physical sacrifices until the living stone offered himself up for not just Israel but for the whole world. The remnant of believers that have been scattered abroad are not called living stones, but rather, lively stones. As lively stones, believing Israel were to do something, they were to be built up as a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices, not the physical ones which would be accepted because the living stone has received them, the lively stones, when they received him. A spiritual house, those who put others, strangers, ahead of themselves, will build a large spiritual house, as opposed to a physical house, like the house of Israel. A holy priesthood, Peter tells these Jewish saints that are scattered abroad that they are a holy priesthood. This goes hand in hand with what the children of Israel were told at Mount Sinai, that if they would keep his covenant, the Old Testament law, that they would be a holy priesthood, not the church, the body of Christ, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, giving, mercy, patience, love, friendship, humility, etc., are acceptable sacrifices to him. Peter is not addressing Gentiles in the body of Christ. There is no such thing as the priesthood of the believer in the dispensation of grace. God mentioned that the children of Israel would become a kingdom of priests in the literal kingdom. Here we have Peter writing to the Jews that have been scattered because of their rejection of God's word, as well as to those that were saints from Jerusalem who scattered at the persecution that arose concerning Stephen. Acts 8 verse 1. 1 Peter 2 verse 6 Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, 
Behold, I lay in Shown a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Isaiah 28 verse 16 Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. Jesus is referred to in the scripture as the rock, and also as the stone. He clears up any false teaching about who the real rock is. It is Jesus, the chief cornerstone, not Peter, that the kingdom church is built upon. 1 Peter 2 verse 7 Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner. Jesus is the precious stone that the little flock were trusting in, that were now scattered throughout the regions, because of the persecution of believers by Saul of Tarsus. Then later on by the leaders of Israel, Saul's replacements, that were trying to stop what was going on in Jerusalem. Isaiah 28 verse 16. Israel's very leaders, disallowed, rejected, Jesus, because they were disobedient to their own scriptures. He should have been made the head of the corner by them, but they were blinded by their sin. Peter is quoting Psalm 118 verse 22, 1 Peter 2 verse 8, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Those who stumbled did so by choice. They chose to be disobedient to the truth that they received because they didn't like how it was not what they wanted or were taught to expect. Instead of checking it out for themselves, they hardened their hearts to the truth. God in his foreknowledge saw that they would do this, so Peter is just repeating to these people that they would be disobedient and choose to stumble at the rock of offense. Isaiah 8 verse 14, And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. God did not create them to stumble. They stumbled at his word, because they were disobedient to it. God had history written down before it happened. Some say that God caused it to happen, and that they didn't have a choice. They did have a choice, but they stumbled when they came to the place to make the right decision, and they were disobedient. Disobedient meant they knew the right thing to do, but chose to do otherwise. 1 Peter 2 verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Ye are a chosen generation, that generation that was alive when the kingdom of heaven was being preached as at hand. Paul never said the kingdom was at hand because it no longer was being offered after a certain point. The kingdom will be at hand again during the tribulation period, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world again at that time by Jewish believers, not Gentiles. Peter was writing to the little flock of believing Jews from among the children of Israel who would inherit the kingdom. Matthew 24 verse 13. A royal priesthood. Peter begins to quote Exodus 19 verse 6 when he says his readers are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. The body of Christ is not a nation, it is a body, made up of Jews and Gentiles, with Christ as its head. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. The doctrine of the priesthood of the believer is not a doctrine for the church, it is for Israel. Peter was a Jew, he was an apostle to the circumcision, he was not speaking to you, he was speaking to those Jewish kingdom saints who had scattered abroad a persecution that arose concerning Stephen in Acts 8 verse 1 and 11 colon 9. 1 Peter 1 verse 2. 1 Peter 2 verse 10, which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. In time past, before Abraham became Abraham, he was simply Abram, who worshipped idols along with his father back in Ur of the Chaldees. But God called him and made of him a great nation that will one day, in the kingdom, become a nation of priests, a holy nation, to be a blessing to the Gentile nations. The little flock of kingdom believers were the Israel of God, not believers in the body of Christ. Galatians 6 verse 16, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. The little flock that was scattered obtained mercy by believing Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. We obtained mercy by believing that he died for our sins, was buried, and that he rose from the dead three days later. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1-4 1 Peter 2 verses 11-12 Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that, whereas they speak against you as evildoers, 
they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, does that help you understand that Peter is not writing to the body of Christ? He is writing to the kingdom saints that had been dispersed at the persecution that arose concerning Stephen. Liberals will tell you that this is the church being spoken of here, and that they were dispersed in 70 AD that is not the case. The kingdom saints were dispersed by the Jews themselves with the aid of Rome many years earlier by Saul of Tarsus. This may help you understand why the Apostle Paul went after the Jew first when he would go into each city to preach the gospel, he was a great debtor to them after having persecuted them even unto death. The day of visitation, this phrase is mentioned 15 times in the Bible, and it always means the time when they stand before God and give an account. Isaiah 10 verse 3, And what will ye do in the day of visitation? and in the desolation which shall come from far, to whom will ye flee for help, and where will ye leave your glory? 1 Peter 2 verses 13 to 17 Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king, as supreme, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Peter is telling the scattered remnant of Jewish believers how to survive their time as they are dispersed among the Gentiles. They are to be examples to all that see them among the Gentiles, that these people are the servants of God. 1 Peter 2 verses 18 to 20 Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it, if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if, when ye do well, and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Some people think they are persecuted because they are believers, when in all truth, they are only being punished for being lazy, or disrespectful, which should not be named among Christ's followers. 1 Peter 2 verses 21 to 25, For even he ran to where ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls, who did no sin, he was born without sin in his immaculate conception, and he never sinned. Hebrews 4 verse 15, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. While these believers cannot save anyone by their own deaths, they can point people to Christ by the example of their lives lived out in front of them. You were a sheep going astray, Israel is referred to as sheep in the Bible, the body of Christ is not, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls, this is a title of Jesus Christ. He is Israel's shepherd, and always has been, and he is also the head of the body of Christ today. Hebrews 13 verses 20 to 21, Now the God of peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen.